Today we're going to follow the path of what it takes to build a special car for a client. With all the experience that I've had working on Porsches, racing them, helping friends, it's given me the unique position that I can really work with a client to give them something new, something special, something that has the provenance that's based on what Porsche might have done. Sometimes clients find a car that they think meets most of their demands, and they'll send the car to us you know, to get checked out and they may want a few little upgrades where he'd like an upgrade in the braking system or he would like the interior to be more period correct or having that special little twist that emulates the earlier cars. You know, we're happy to work with them. We have all sorts of ideas when it comes to design so we don't take a cookie cutter approach to where one 911 ST is the same as someone else's. Each car is different, each car is unique, each car has its own special touch that reflects the client as well as our input. In this particular case, the client found a car on the internet and it was represented as being a certain quantity. But unfortunately, once the car arrived, it didn't meet to its standards. So after conferring with the client, you know, we went over the project, discussed some of the goals as to what he would really, really want. When Stuart finally flew out to take a look at the car and we reviewed the list of what the car needed, we sat down and discussed what could we do? How could we make this car something really special for him? From our goals list, we established the route that we were going to take and the timeline allotted for it. Stuart wished to build the ultimate version of the 911 ST, the one based on the Tour de France model, built from 1970 through 1971. Stu's particular car started out life as a 1972 911S. Originally equipped with air conditioning, a sunroof, and some other heavy options, uh, the car had been modified to resemble a hot rod 911R type car. Starting with stripping down the shell, we discovered what needed to be done to turn the car into the straight foundation that we needed for our project. After proper reinforcement to original factory standards, using patterns from the 911 ST and other Porsche racing models, we then sent the car to Kundensport, our body shop, for further modification. We also focused on other period correct details for the bottom of the car. We added the jack point reinforcements. Then we also did the same thing for the sway bar mountings for the front and the rear of the car. This also included reinforcement of the engine compartment area with the shock tower reinforcements and engine bay corner reinforcements. There's additional reinforcement for the center tunnel as is quite obvious on the 911 RS series, but not known that well amongst the 911 ST and TR versions. You'll notice a certain trapezoidal shape, you know, the opening for the shift coupler. That pattern was fabricated by our body shop, again, to copy what was originally done on the competition versions of the cars. That helps reduce the amount of flex of the torsion tube area when the car would undergo the rigors of hard driving you know, with the bumps and thumps that would come on country roads. All the oil lines have been changed over to competition grade quality utilizing original German hose from the period. Now, the proper swedging techniques utilizing the correct German machine has also been used in an effort to keep this correct. As a 1972 model, this was the only year where the oil reservoir tank was put in front of the tire on the right side. We further modified this tank by going to the 911R style filler. Reason being in the rigors and the time constraints of racing, you wanted to be able to check the oil add oil as quickly as possible. So the simple bayonet style cap of the 911R was employed in this modification. You'll notice how nice and smooth the fender wells are. The body was smoothed down to bare metal, any imperfections taken care of, and then again primer and the hardened paint. On the underside of the fenders in the rear, you'll see the same method that Porsche had used in attaching the butt weld of the fender flare to the main chassis itself. Again, some light undercoating was used in an effort to reduce the amount of checking or chipping that could transfer through to the outer finish. Up front, the same attention to detail has been paid. 
Even the small louvers from an area commonly known as the smuggler's box are straight, clean, and as original. The sway bar reinforced area, which under the rigors of rallying, saw a tremendous amount of abuse and cracking. So Porsche had wisely reinforced this area with the cover plates, you know, which we did here. The 911 ST had a rather unique fender flare design. This was before what people would know as the RSR or turbo flare, and they're quite unique. It has a much more rounded shape. It's elongated when compared to the standard flares that people are normally used to when they see a turbo driving by. As these flares were only produced for the racing department back in the early 70s, it was very difficult to find them. So we contracted a metal fabricator that utilized an English wheel and hand form these panels to our specifications. Up front, the 911 ST utilized fiberglass fenders for lighter weight. We sourced a set of locally made fenders and then had our body shop rework them to their correct contour so they matched. Also added the right fiberglass cloth on the underside to emulate the original pieces. When Stuart was researching the project, we were looking for unique possibilities of how to make the car just that much more different, but within the correct ideas and thoughts and philosophy in the race department. Stuart came up with the design for a special fiberglass rear lid, incorporating lightning holes, balsa wood reinforcement strips, and the correct German twill was utilized for a very light and strong piece. In addition to that, we had hand fabricated a custom grill that's very smooth, that helps to keep rocks and debris out of the engine compartment. A single license plate lamp has been installed in an effort to meet the regulations and save a few more ounces. 